Hey everybody, welcome back to this series on Curse of Strahd preparation for the Shadow Dark RPG. This is going to be my prep for my second session, uh, which is just tomorrow. And um, I've already done some of it. Uh, in the last video I went over kind of what we did in session one and some of the documents I'd already written up here, the, the bestiary and the document on Barovia Village. But I think today I'm going to be trying to develop the the one most likely location they're, they're going to visit, which is Sirius, which is the church. So I have a lot of it done. I don't have the crypts done yet. But I also want at some point, maybe not in this video, it depends on how long it goes, but I also want to develop two other dungeons. I want to uh, sort of develop the cistern um, beneath the city where the well kind of opens up into, and I think it's a bigger location with more stuff going on down there. Maybe they don't even find that now. I mean, I don't know if they're going to investigate the well or the poisoning. Um, it's been hinted that someone poisoned the well. I don't think they're going to follow up on it. No one, no one at least seems to have picked up on it so far. But if they do and they want to go down there, they might find a special kind of clay or they might find like a, a, an oddly colored clay and maybe they'll find that that's on the boot of the, the doctor or something like that if it turns out that he's the one who betrayed them. I don't think they're going to go down there. So I'm not going to focus my prep on it. I have notes already written down in my little notebook in front of me. Um, so if they do go down there, I'm not completely helpless and like what's going on down there. I'll just, I'll just, I won't have the sort of same prep that I'll have for the, the church. Um, and then the third dungeon I want to develop is a bit further away from uh, Barovia town. So I think what I will do is um, up here at Krasnul or something, Krasnul house, I'm going to make into death house, essentially. So uh, one of the people in Barovia is Eric. He is the, um, the bartender, Eric. And I made him into um, an actual character. He's not just a Solus. I got rid of the idea of Solus in Barovia. Um, so he's an actual NPC. He's pretty non-descript. He's pretty um, gruff. But I think he is... Um, I'm not sure if he's married to one of the three sisters, Mary, but I don't think he is. I think he's just a friend or a, a, just a hire, basically. But he's going to stay behind and try to take care of the, the tavern for a few more days and close it up. And I think they're going to notice that he's missing. Because he's gonna go, he's gonna go visit his brother up in, uh, you know, his his brother's like, you know, Melvo or something like that. Eric Smelvo, um, Shmelmo. I don't know, actually, Shmelvo, Shmelvo, <laughs> Smelvo. I think is how you'd say it. Uh, basically, this this house here, uh, northeast of Barovia, and so he's gonna go visit his brother at his farm, and he's gonna not have come back. And so the players will have an option to go and try to investigate his missing, his going missing, and if they do find that he's but they'll go to the farm and they'll find that it's been, you know, he's killed. Or, or maybe he's, yeah, I think he's been killed. And a lot of people have been killed there. The families have been killed. And then they'll find an indication of the cult there. And some one of the cultists will indicate the Krosnel house as sort of the, the local base for the cult outside of Barovia. And so they'll go up that way and then there will be a dungeon, which I'm going to base off of Death, Death House, but I'm not. I'm going to change it up quite a bit. And that one I also don't have to worry about so much because I don't know, first of all, if they're going to bother following up on it. Eric going missing. I don't know if they'll notice him going missing. I'll try to drop hints that, you know, he's gone, but they might just think he left. Right? <laughs> I don't know. If the, and other things will be going on at that point. Um, so, today what I want to do is I want to finish up the church. Um, so I have this document here, and I had already some of this stuff going on in the Barovia document. I'm going to copy it over um, so that I have it in, the, in a document specifically for it. Cut that out and paste it in, because I like to have my, my dungeons very separate. So I don't think I need this document open really right now. So I'm gonna move this over here. I'm going to bring up my map of the church, which let me uh, let me get to here. Um, I have three levels of the church. I'm going to open it up and I'm gonna, uh, oops, it's just full size. <laughs> I'm gonna make it small here. Um, and then I'm gonna minimize this one. And then I'm going to jump to this one. Because I already have, I've already done the uh, sort of the top two, so I'm going to keep these documents up. Uh, the church, and I have uh, the bestiary, which I'm going to be referencing as I go. All right. Um, so, what is the purpose of this dungeon? Well, it's to give them a sense of what's going on, right? Uh, and and sort of a taste of what it will be like when they go into really more undead heavy, like if they go into Castle Ravenloft. So I want the zombies, I want a vampire, and I want them to be have, have to be cautious in the way that they approach that vampire. So um, they're going to know that something very seriously wrong is happening, or something very seriously wrong has happened there. And um, and I know sort of what they said they're going to do. 
So um, one of the characters said they wanted to sleep for the rest of the afternoon. The, the, the idea was they, they told me that they're going to go talk to Irina and Ismark because they haven't done that yet. And then they wanted to maybe go check out the church. But that they really wanted to do was go back to the inn, lock themselves in, but then stay awake at night and see if they can hear or see anything happening outside if, they, if anything happens at night. So they want to be aware of that. And so I think that's actually pretty cool because that means they're going to start taking some stress because they'll be staying up late and over the course of the night. And I've had a, a stress system built in. So um, they're kind of playing right into that, which I was honestly surprised when the player suggested that. She was like, well, we should we should stay up tonight and see what happens. Um, you know, I thought, well, surely they're not going to go investigate at night, but it sounds like they might do that. So we'll see what happens. But um, what I think is going to happen is that one of the, the daughters, Sorvia, uh, one of the three Vistani sisters in the Blood of the Vine Tavern, Sorbia, the youngest, I have her kind of be kind of, she's kind of a daydreamer. She kind of loses herself in, in what she's doing. And so she, she's going to maybe wander outside at night or she's going to be outside at night for some reason and she'll be attacked by Strahd zombies and that will be like a, they'll come out and try to rescue her. And they might not. I mean, they might just hear her scream and stay inside and not go out and rescue her. But if, but my, probably they'll go out and try to save her. Um, and if she's saved, if she isn't killed, and if they rescue her from the Strahd zombies, then she will invite them, uh, or her sister the next morning, Mirabelle, will invite them to the Zerpool Falls so that if they would like to go visit the Vistani there, they can. And they, they, they can stay there. It'll be safe. So they'll have an, an, in, an invitation to somewhere other than Barovia, which will kind of move them further west and get them going in the adventure. So that's one thing I want to have happen that night. Um, another that's going to happen is that Mad Mary is going to be visited by Gertruda, and it's possible that they're going to go back and try to find that out. And I think if that happens, Mad Mary will be killed. I think that's the last night, and I think she's going to be uh, drained of blood. Or she'll be so weak, right, So uh, that she's almost dead, and so they know, uh-oh, something's happening here. And so they'll, they'll find the marks. They'll know that she's being visited at night by something. Um, and Gertruda, you know, the night after that, they might be able to follow, follow her. I think that day or the day after, Irina is going to be attacked again. And if they aren't there to stop it, if they're still in town, if they haven't made other arrangements for her, then she'll be taken to the castle. Because another thing I wanted to have is that I wanted the players to be motivated to go to the castle early, but then to get out of there. So not to go through it as a full dungeon crawl, but rather like, okay, I'm going to go in and we're going to investigate and then we're going to get out. And so if Irina is taken to the castle, um, or she's taken and it's clear that she has been, um, maybe that will be like a bit of very colorful cloth at the scene of a crime and it will indicate the Vistani still go to the Zerapool Falls and someone there can indicate, okay, they've gone to the castle. Maybe they won't find that. Maybe they won't decide to go. Maybe they'll just say, sorry, it's too dangerous. We won't go to the castle and Irina will be just turned into a vampire or just be killed. I'm not tying her so particularly into the story um, that her death or her capture is the end of everything. Um, but th there will be an indication that she's there. Uh, so that is kind of what I want there. Um... Uh, one of the players might have a dream. If they do sleep at night, they might be visited in their dream by Madame Eva, uh, who asks them to help her. Or maybe, I, I wasn't sure about that, maybe they'll just have a foreshadowing dream. Maybe they'll see Velaki and they'll see everyone smiling creepily, right? Because all is well in Velaki. <laughs> or maybe they'll see something out further west in Kresik, or maybe they'll see something with, like, you know, the Yester Tree or Yester Hill or the Golthias Tree. Or they might see, you know, who knows what. But they'll, they'll have some sort of vision. I haven't yet figured that out. And then um, uh, one of the things that could happen is that I, I don't want it to be a hag, but I want it to be a hag's daughter. Um, there's that woman that's kind of going around town um, taking children. Remember in The Curse of Strahd, as written, she's just taking children. She's a hag. Um, but I'm going to change it into a hag's daughter. So in, in my game, my world, that's like someone who has been given to a hag as a young child. And so they have you know, connections to them, they serve them, they're bound to them, but they're not the same. They're not actually a hag. They're, they're a lesser thing than kind of a witch or something like that. And so this, she's a hag's daughter. She's not a full-on hag, a night hag or something like that, or a woad hag. And she's going to be loading up bodies into her cart. And she's harvesting, and I don't know what she's harvesting, something weird, right? So I think she's going to be harvesting like eyelashes or, or saliva or or the the, the, you know, the, the the death glare of the dead, and she's like holding a mirror in front of them and like putting it away. I don't know what it's going to be, but but it's going to be weird. But, you know, in Curse of Strahd, there's a, a hag taking children. If the party doesn't stop her, they're not heroes. I mean, you, you see someone kidnap a child, throw it into a bag. Very clearly, you got to stop that person. 
Like that's just it. And that means they're gonna get into it with a hag right away. I don't like that. So uh, instead, I'm gonna make it much more optional that the thing that she's harvesting is creepy and weird, but it's not directly like evil. It's not an evil thing to take dead bodies and to you know swab their mouths for saliva or something and put it into a jar. Like it's gross and creepy, but it's not exactly evil. But it's definitely an indication this is like a, an alchemist or a witch or a hag or something like that. And so they're going to know that. And then she's also just going to be able to provide a bit of that foreshadowing. Um, and uh, and if they do get into it with her for whatever reason, she's not a hag. She's not going to just outright kill them, right? Like, like just, just, just destroy them. Um, so it'll foreshadow the witches of Barovia because I want them to be a bigger thing, especially once they get into uh, Valachia and then further west into Crescent. And then finally, the last thing I thought could happen if they just stay in town for a while, right? So Eric's going to go missing, uh, Irina's going to go missing, Ma Mary's going to get killed, Sorvia's going to get attacked and then leave, and then if or, or she's dead, or if she doesn't die, then she and her sisters are going to leave, and uh, and the town will just slowly be depopulated of anybody but Ismark, basically. And and Ismark, once Irina goes missing, he is going to go nuts, and I think he's going to go try to find her, so he'll go off by himself to the castle. So basically, it'll be depopulated of anybody that's serious except for Bildreth and his nephew. I'm not calling him Periwimple, I'm calling him Vanya. Um, in this game, Periwimple makes no sense <laughs> for the naming convention, but that's okay, so we're calling him Vanya. Um, and so uh, Bildreth and Vanya are going to be uh, the last two, basically, holdouts in town that, that are named characters that will have anything like that, because everyone else, Doru and the Doctor, I guess, will be there too. So it'll be Doru, the Doctor, and then... Uh, Bildreth and, and Vanya. Um, everybody else will be, you know, nameless NPCs. I have lists of names and portraits, so if they do go to a random house with someone, they can meet somebody who's actually a person there. But uh, the main kind of interacting characters that are there, uh, Father Donovich, uh, Ismark and Irina, the three Vistani sisters, Eric, um, Mad Mary, and the, uh, the hag, who I'm calling Maud, uh, which is kind of a weird name for this region, and I think that's good. I'm going to have her have a non- Velaki accent, a non-Vistani accent. I'm kind of doing a bad Russian accent, right, for most of them. But but I'm going to have her have something like maybe a Cockney or something like that. And it'll be like, whoa, she's very different. She's not from around here. And that's exactly right. Because she's a hag's daughter. She's been brought here um, to help serve what's going on. So she's not she's not from the region. Um, okay, so the cistern is there if they decide to go looking for the source of the poison. The... Madhouse or Death House will be there if they decide to go looking for Eric, if they notice he's missing, uh, and they go that direction. That will happen in a few days. So I need something to kind of happen over the next couple of in case they do nothing. Um, and, and what will happen over the next few days, again, is that night Sorvia is going to be attacked and Mad Mary is going to be visited and, and brought to almost death, and then the next night she'll die if they don't do anything differently. Um, and, and I think the way that they'll find out about that, if they don't check on her, the way that they'll find out about that is I've been having Vanya take care of her he brings her food, basically, because he liked Gertruda, too. Not in that way, but he was friends with her. And so he, he'll go there, and then he'll come back, and they'll find him weeping or something and saying that Mary's very sick, right? So that they have another option. So I, basically, I want to give them things to do in every direction that they can't do them all. Because another thing that's going to happen is that if they meet Ismark, he is going, and he thinks that they're trustworthy, he is going to insist on them taking Irina to Valaki as soon as possible that he wants her out of the danger of this place because she's been attacked, everything's going wrong. He doesn't want to leave because he's the new Burgomaster. He doesn't want um, to leave his people, those that are still remaining. So he's going to try to stay and, you know, uh, and help as best he can until no one's left. But he wants her gone. And so he's going to try to get her out. So I think that's what's going to be the main thing is that they'll be talking to him and he'll say, please, as soon as you're leaving and leave as soon as possible, please take her with you. Please take her with you. You seem relatively trustworthy. <laughs> you're here um, and you're not, you know, you're an outsider, but you're, you, you I, I don't know exactly why he'll trust them. But maybe, especially if Sorvia that night is attacked, he might come the next morning and say, help. Or if Irina is attacked again um, that night, maybe they'll hear that distraction too. They'll hear that something happening there. So there'll be a couple attacks that night. And things are going wrong uh, everywhere, every which way. So, but if for whatever reason they don't help Irina, and they want to stay in town and figure out what's going on, try to track down the cult. They'll be able to do it, and they'll go to Death House. All right, <laughs> all that preamble, 15 minutes of preamble for, uh, for the church. So as you can see, I have um, already a couple of these rooms a little bit just described. I have the Catacomb Landing, 
uh, stone walls marked with holy symbols which have been etched out, and the door to 17 is ajar. Otherwise, the door to uh, the hallway, 18, and the door to 16 are closed. And I think the door to 16 is going to be marked with um, uh, door marked with uh, a storage sign. So they'll know that one, the one is slightly open, the other one uh, is uh, uh, maybe like an iron grate. Door to 18 iron grate that reveals long dark hallway. So they have choices. Again, again, like ultimately if they want to investigate this place, um, they'll be able to just, well, if you want to investigate the place, you got to give them choices, right? You got to give them choices. And, and even little choices like, okay, do you go through the door that's slightly ajar that just, you know, is it looks like the glimpse you can peer through looks like a bedroom. Do you go into the room that has a storage sign or do you go into the long dark hallway? You give them choices. You don't say, here are three doors. Which one do you pick? Right? So that's all I'm doing there. Uh, number 16 is going to have wine barrels, but I don't want it to be just wine barrels. Um, that would be something kind of interesting. Maybe there's oil. Uh, maybe there is a small barrel of oil. Small barrel. Oops. <laughs> I can spell. Um, of oil. It's like 15 flasks worth, right? So that gives them something there, <laughs> something there. And then um, maybe there's something else in the storage room, uh, something else that is valuable. I don't know what, but something. In Dora's room, there's gonna be a short sword and antique chain mail. They don't have a lot of stuff yet. And I think it's going to be up on the wall, like it's um, on wall display. And I think that um, if they want it, they can maybe get it resized over the course of a day or two from um, Vanya, who is the kind of blacksmith working for Bildrith. Um, and then they can have chainmail. Short sword, you know, I don't know if they want it, but they can have it. But the chain mail is the thing that, you know, and obviously it's Doru, so if he, they, if he comes to and he wants to travel with them, he's going to ask for his, his sword and mail back. Um, but it's, it's antique, right? It's like this is something his ancestors might have had. Uh, some knights that, because this is, you know, again, you don't really wear chain mail in the 17th century so much. But he does, and he likes it, and it's clearly it's been used. Um, clearly seen use. Small portrait of Gertruda, um, which is knocked over on its face. And then uh, a book of prayers. Now that's going to be under the bed. Under the bed. Um, it's going to contain the blessed spell from that and so any priest which we have a priest there as long as the book is carried you can cast that spell as if you had as if you knew it so basically it gives you that extra spell um but you have to carry it so it's a it's a spell slot or it's an item slot to carry that book uh but then you have the blessed spell at the cost of a, of a thing all right then you have the crypts now the crypts are going to be a bit more tricky because i kind of want it to be but the big graveyard out back is for everybody Right, there's a big graveyard out back that's for everybody. And if they go, I might actually put in a, a little thing about what happens if they go back there and like mess around with graves and at night, especially. Like they, I don't know if they're going to do that, but they could. Um, and I think one of the nights I might add in the ghost train. All of these spirits rise up. It's like a very clear, maybe it's a stormy night. There's lightning and, and then they hear this, you know, uh, strike, uh, a boom. And if they happen to be looking out towards the graveyard, they see this glow from the back of the graveyard. And if they go investigate, they see all of these spirits rising and going up to the castle. And that's the moment when Strahd is like, you know, his spirit is being bound back to the world or something like that. I don't know. So they'll have, they'll see that cool train of ghosts that, um, um, they've done. I'm going to mark that down. Seven event train of ghosts. This is just written down in my little notebook here. Okay. So crypts. So, but inside, that's the graveyard. Inside the crypts, I kind of want them to, you know, there's a, a certain chance of zombies or skeletons, right? A, 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 uh, I'd say a one in six of each um, crypt of each, no, one in six, how about a one in three of crypt 
having risen skeletons. Um, or having skeletons. And they are number, let me go to my bestiary. It's going to be down at the bottom because they're undead. Uh, number 75, skeletons number 75. Um, and I think in the skeletons, if you look at their stats here, they're AC 13, which it's because they're wearing chain mail that you could just say that it's just their natural toughness of the bones and the difficulty to hit them. They've got 11 hit points, which is pretty tough um, at level one. And they attack with a short sword, which is a D6 with plus one to hit or a short bow, which they're not gonna have short bows down here. Uh, and they're not terribly strong. They are level two monsters, which means uh, they're you know a little, little tougher and they're immune to more, uh, morale checks. Um, so I think I'm gonna make them, maybe there's a skeleton or two. Right, so there's a one in three chance, and how many crypts are there? Um, a, B, C, D, E, F. So there's a one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm actually going to put this uh, cut up here. Paste that there, put that there. So there's a one in three third chance of crypt having skeletons. So you have um, six of them. So that means there's two of them are gonna have a skeleton or two each of, I think it's just gonna be one to two skeletons. Because again, I don't want this to be combat, like combat, combat, combat. Maybe they have a whole bunch, and that's just what the dice say, and this is like a really tough undead menace of skeletons down here. Maybe it's more like, okay, um, you know, not actually as bad as all that. So um, what's in each one? Well, I'm gonna have to come up with names, right? Barovian names, they're each crypt, because the way that crypts work, right, is that those who are either prominent priests um, uh, which I'm going to make Father Arcady is number 24. He is a uh, certainly a powerful undead skeleton or something, or maybe something more recent, the more recent priest. And so there's still a little flesh left, a little flesh left on him. More of a, maybe more of a Strahd zombie, but a strong one. He's in number 24. Uh, and then I have just kind of, I named these things, the dark totems. That's where the totems are, which are causing the undead to rise in Barovia. It's sort of channeling the undead. So the dark totems, 23 is where those are. 22 is the Defiled Crypts. They went through it. 21, I know it's the Malakovs. 20 is the Alonskis. 19 is the Long Tombs. And it's, I don't know exactly what that means. It's just it's a long room with tombs. <laughs> and then I have the Crypts. Um, and so I'm going to really quickly go through and just give them a name. So that way if they say what, you know, if they ask who this crypt belongs to, I'll just put a family name and then I'll put uh, six first names. I don't think I'm going to put all six. I'm, they're not going to read through every single one. So I'm just going to put a couple first names in. That way they're like, who's on this one? Um, and I'll keep it you know, in front of me. So the family names are going to be, uh, this is the uh, Alice Troy crypt. The Alice Troy. Um, below that is going to be the, uh, the uh, let's see, the Ulbrick. Ulbrick crypt. Below that is going to be the Rilski, Rilskis, Rilskis. And then I'm just looking, so I'm taking this, by the way, from page 25 of the actual Curse of Strahd book where they have a list of Barovian names. I'm just taking from there. Um, the Lazarescu, I like that a lot, Lazarescu. In fact, I, I really like that name. I might use that elsewhere, Lazarescu. Maybe it's an old family in Barovia. Um, and then there is the Dilisnaya. Dilisnia Crypt. Dilisnia Crypt. And then last but not least, we have the um, the Cantamere's. The Cantamere Crypt. I think that's also a name that I see elsewhere in Barovia. I like that Cantamere. So they have, we have the Elistroy, the Ulbrek, the Rilskis, the Lazarescus, the Dilisnias, the Lisnias, and the Cantamere. And families. And those are basically just... Um, Families that have lived in Barovia, prominent, uh, prominent, prominent families in Barovia. Maybe, maybe the death house is for the Lazarescu or the Cantamirs. I like that. All right. So, what's in the Alstroy crypt? Well, we have a couple names. We have, um, uh, let's see, Korga and um, Corina. Yeah, Korga and Corina are two names in there. And what else is in there? Well, we need some treasure. So I'm going to go to the, um, I'm using the uh, Shadow Dark here, going to the Shadow Dark treasure tables for the actual book. Um, that's going to be all the way down into um, Game Master treasure. Here we go. Treasure zero through three. This is low level treasure. So I'm going to, I'm going to use, um, am I going to roll? 
I have to go get my dice. I actually don't have my dice in front of me. Um, I'm going to say a certain amount of money in trade goods. You know, the thing is, my players are not going to be grave robbers. One of the players might, but the rest are not going to. So I'm just going to put, like, little things here, right? So maybe there is a, uh, a silver tooth worth, like, a silver tooth 10 SP or 10, uh, yeah, SP, which uh, in this game are uh, Copex. 10 Copex. And then um, maybe there's a, uh, uh, hmm, what else would be on this list? Um, two s gold rings in a moldy uh, wooden box. Yeah, and that's each, uh, that's worth 25 Copex each. Or maybe even more than that. Maybe these are each worth, we'll say they're worth 50 Copex each. This is gold. So if they go into the Elastroy Crypt, there's a one in three chance of it having some skeletons and they might find some some stuff if they hunt through the crypts. Uh, in Korga's tomb, they might find two uh, silver tooth and in Karina's tomb, they find 50 Copex. Um, and I, I think I just kind of want to make that sort of thing, right? The idea is they're, they're going past the crypts. Maybe there's a skeleton in them that kind of comes out and attacks them as they pass. If they go in there, I want something. I don't think they're going to spend their time hunting through crypts. They're not that sort of party. But, you know, you want to have treasure and uh, just in case they do. So who's in the next one? We're going to have Emmerich. And, and the nice thing is they're probably not going to read all these names so I can look through it. And uh, uh, Lavinia. Lavinia. And in this one, we're going to have, um, there's an undersized pearl worth 20 Copex and uh, a golden bowl. And that's worth 15, that's worth 150 Copex. So again, if they go through and they loot, um, maybe they'll be cursed. Maybe they'll be cursed. I don't know, maybe not. But then we have a real skis. Um, uh, and the real skis are um, Dargos and um, Grilsha. Grilsha Rilski. Grilsha Rilski. <laughs> what a name. Um, she is a jade oops, and gold uh, heart pin worth 200. Opex worth more value. And then a um, chip of an emerald worth 10 Copex. Uh, 100 Copex. So there's a little bit of an emerald worth about 100 Copex. Eh, it's worth 10 Copex. It's not worth 100. That'd be crazy. Okay, the Lazarescu. Now, if I'm going to tie them to Death House, I should make this actually interesting, right? Um, so what would they have that is... Um, uh, how about a... Ooh, what about a little book um, with prayers? Uh, so who are they going to be? It's going to be a Valentina... And Olivenka and small prayer book with arcane scroll hidden in the pages. And the prayer book is just a prayer book. It doesn't have anything magical. But if they search through that, they can get what scroll, what spell. Um, let's see. It'll be a one use. Anyone can use it, but it's... a uh, it's a spell, so it's creepy. Um, what would make sense for a first level spell in that place? Maybe something, or maybe a second level spell. Could do Misty Step Silence. Could do Web. Be Alter Self. Um, feather Fall, Floating Disc, Hold Portal, Light, Mage Armor, Magic Missile, Protection from Evil. I could do Protection from Evil, I already have that, or one of the characters has that. 
Um, alter self. That would be kind of creepy. With arcane scroll of alter self hidden in the pages. So there's some creepiness going on with the Lazarescus if they happen to find them. And then the other item will be just more traditional treasure um, if they happen to go back into that. Um, let's see. Back into that uh, treasure here. Uh, maybe there's a... Uh, Mm. Um, a silver locket with a painting of a beautiful but evil looking child but cruel looking child uh, and that's worth 20 kopecks Again, I want the Lazarescu, if they are going to be Death House, if that ever comes up, right, the players will make that connection and go, ooh, these people are creepy. This family was creepy from the beginning. They are always involved in the cult. That's cool. All right, and then the Dillis Nias, we're going to uh, just say something. Uh, this is going to be um, Bogan and uh, Boris. And there we just have a bent tin fork. Um... <laughs> worth one copper and a uh, let's see how about we put in a uh, wooden statue of the morning lord which is going to be worth uh, what 10 kopecks which is a silver, silver basically each copec is a silver piece. And then the Cantomirs, um, we're going to say this is, uh, let's see, we're going to do Vladislav, Vladislav, and um, uh, Magda. And uh, Vladislav and Magda, they have. Um, uh, let's see, uh, they have a golden anchor necklace. It's kind of interesting. And that's worth 100 kopecks. And maybe the Contemirs were sailors, even though this is a landlocked country. And a an eye patch. Oh, I love that. Eye patch made of bat wing leather. Ooh, and that's worth uh, 30 kopecks, but it's also just kind of like a cool little thing they can have. A little eye patch made of bat wing leather. All right, um, so these are the crypts. Again, one in, uh, one in third chance of crypt having one to two skeletons. Um, I like to keep things still, you know, flexible. I don't like to say there are this many here. One of the reasons uh, is it gives me more permission to change it. Right? If I think they've had a lot of combats, I can just say that I rolled a five or a six, and I feel worse about ignoring like positive encounters I've made. I think that's silly. Um, and then the other reason I like that is just simply because I prefer to do... Um, uh, um, chances. I think that having chances makes it more fun. For me, as a DM, I don't know what's coming up. If they have a bunch of skeletons, like, okay that's what's down here and then if I don't know what's down here exactly so it just keeps it more interesting for me um, all right then the last thing or not last thing we have um, this has been a pretty long video um, I, I want to finish it up though I'll just do it quickly so we have uh, the long tombs and in the long tombs we have uh, we definitely have a skeleton down here no we have a, um, a cultist body I think we have a, a cultist body a collapsed cultist body um, Wearing strange robes marked with the same symbol as is on the door. Uh, somehow tattooed or cut or something like that. Um, zombie. Um, after one round of combat, one, two skeletons join fight. So this is a tough, 19 is a tough place. Um, 
And again, have a little bit of treasure just in case on the body of the cultist. We'll drop um, a little, let's see here, here. Um, long tombs on the body of the cultist is a, uh, is a, ooh, is a pouch with 15 copper and a ring marked with a family crest. He's not from it. He put it in his loot. He pocketed it. But he stole it from the Lazarescu's. Lazarescu's. Lazarescu, um, which is a uh, a uh, um, a dragon or a, a hippogriff. Um, rampant. Um, and if they ask around, they'll be like, oh, this is the Lazarescu's. That's a, a uh, house. That there's a noble family that come to live in Barovia. And they'll see that it's also Lazarescu, though. Uh, the same, same mark is on this one. Uh, hippogriff rampant. Okay. So that's that's what they'll find on the collapsed body if they fight him and search him. All right, then uh, we have the uh, El Elkonski. It should be Alonski. I had Elkonski, but Alonski crypt. That's number twenty, and that is um, the Alonski. There's only two in there. Uh, this is going to be um, Nianka and um, Christopher. Christopher, and uh, they're both dead. They're just dead, and inside is going to be um, a long sword and uh, uh, yeah, just a long sword because the long sword's good, and they don't have a weapon like that yet. And the party doesn't. You know, the party can be choosy about what they have, um, or maybe a, a long sword and a uh, spear. Yeah, a longsword and a spear. All right, in the two different tombs. And then the Malakov crypt, um, I think, is going to be, uh, it's going to lead to the cistern. So this is definitely protected. There's a ghoul here. Um, inside tomb, scratching sound. Um, inside uh, Ivana's tomb. There's a scratching sound. And inside is a, inside is a zombie. Um, and then past, past crypt is strange, recently dug out. No, is it dug out? Is partially collapsed tunnel to sister which is a dungeon all right then the defiled crypt is going to be basically the same thing uh, half collapsed um, rats rat swarms um, and the rat swarms are a beast so I'm gonna go back up to here we're doing oops rats rat swarm here we go that's nasty rat swarm. And then hidden at the back of the crypt is a uh, silver chalice worth 100 kopecks. And a uh, rat swarm, by the way, was number 14. Number 14. And then uh, there is, um, what else is at the back of that? Uh, something cool, something cool. Um, uh, rat swarm with a silver chalice and uh, a blessed shield because one of the players uses a sword and shield and plus one to AC when targeted by evil creatures by uh, 
not evil creatures, by undead or um, what do I have on here? What's the other category? Uh, or monstrous beings. Yeah, monstrous beings. So um, it's a plus two shield, but it's it's blessed uh, shield. So it has a little bit more protection against undead or monsters. So it's a good, it's a good shield. All right, then I have the dark totems, and that will be um, um, ghoul protects. Um, um, ghoul protects. Um, for strange totems that radiate shadow. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, and that's just gonna be it, because that's just the, that's the boss monster in there. Yeah, there's not gonna be treasure there, but Father Arcadia's tomb will have um, blessed holy symbol once per day reroll. Failed spell casting check for the All right, that's it. I've got the church. Um, it's all done. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I mean, I guess that's it. I don't know what to do. Uh, in the next video, we are going to be covering, if I do another video, um, it'll be covering what we did in this session and then my prep for session three. See you guys then.